Of course, you could cut your bread with this meat knife, but should you? Just because you can do something with a tool doesn't mean it's the right tool. So, of course, you can wireframe in Figma, but is it the right tool that will be the most efficient? Wow, that's dangerous, okay. Now, to find the best tool for wireframing, we have to understand first the purpose of a wireframe. When we begin a new project, we have endless potential. We have all these possibilities, the paths we can take. I call this stage as uninformed optimism. It is like the first few months of a new relationship where there is a lot of infatuation and belief that the other person, aka the new project, doesn't have any flaws. Yet everybody and every project has its flaws. What we need to do is to leave the realm of uninformed optimism and reach the realm of informed realism. We want to make sure we are solving the right problems and we want to find the right problems. Now, of course, a designer can find out some of the problems by just talking and communicating with the stakeholders and users, but sometimes you just have to show something to people to actually get the real problems they have regarding the product. And wireframes are great for that reason because they actually let you get feedback fast. Now once you get the feedback and you understand the constraints of the project like the budgeting times or the time constraints they have, you are going to try to find a great solution for the problems. A great solution usually requires not one but three or five solutions that you have to work through ideate so that you can find the right one. And wireframes are a great tool for this because they let you ideate faster, they let you churn not more ideas faster. Figma is great for high fidelity design but when it comes to actually ideating fast and getting feedback fast, Figma kind of falls short, especially when we are looking for feedback about the right stuff. In the early stages of a project, what you are really looking for is to get feedback on your prototypes about structure and content. You really don't want to get feedback on colors or actually typography. They actually matter in terms of UX way less than structure or content and they will likelihood change in the later stages anyway. In addition, doing low fidelity ugly prototypes instead of high fidelity design actually makes you much more protected against the IKEA effect. If you don't know IKEA effect is, when you go to buy a furniture at an IKEA store, you have to assemble it yourself and it is because IKEA knows by their numbers if you actually buy the furniture and assemble it yourself, you will like the final result more because you actually not only invested just your money but also your time. This is bad for a UX designer in the early process because the more time you spend on your prototypes, the more you love your darlings and the first few times when you are actually building a solution, you are much more likely to have missed something important so your design solutions will probably be not that great and you have to be open to receive feedback and let go of your darlings and the best way to do that is to give as little effort as possible to get the quickest prototype. So for the last few months I actually switched from using Figma for low fidelity prototyping, wireframing to actually using Balsamic. Balsamic Balsamic has been around for almost like 10 years now, maybe 15 even. It lets you create an ID8 very fast. You can still get feedback in Balsamic if you share the project with your colleagues or co-workers. And it does create low fidelity prototypes that are ugly enough that the conversation or the feedback you get from your co-workers is around content and structure and not typography and color. And for me, I always find it much more easier to let go of a Balsamic prototype or a solution instead of a high fidelity design solution. So it's also great for my feelings. Now, if you understand the goals and the right tool for wireframing, but you are still unsure about where this process fits in the whole UX design process, please make sure you watch the next video here.